At Chris Kaler Holistic, we demonstrate real healing and real caring to your health issues and needs. Our solution for you is an alternative to the alternative. Our out-of-the-box treatment methods are aimed to your specific well-being and are quite different than most. Venturing down the realm of quantum energy healing, Chris uses unique modalities of healing, such as spiritual intervention with pendulum dowsing, sacred geometry tools such as the neutralization, divinity, and sun ring. Another tool Chris uses is a five-tiered pyramid affectionately known as the Silver Light Pyramid to activate quantum activity within the body. Also, Chris Kaler Holistic uses radionic technologies in various platforms with specific liquid mineral ionics to balance out excesses and deficiencies within the body. At Chris Kaler Holistic, our goal is to get tangible and measurable results in the least amount of time possible so you can carry on with what's important in your life. Another advantage to this unique energy healing is that it can be done at a distance healing session so location is not a barrier and can be done conveniently at your home, office, just about anywhere through Skype or telephone conferencing. Eliminate costly protocols, expensive monthly supplements, high-priced allopathic operations, invasive surgeries, and dubious medication applications that keep you trapped in a financial and health rat race. Get a specific, customized, out-of-the-box solution tailored for your health recovery. At Chris Kaler Holistic, we are warm welcoming and want to put you at ease with your visit to us. Please visit www.chriskaler.net for further information as we welcome your questions and inquiries to starting this unique journey. At Chris Kaler Holistic, we want to show you that we are the alternative to the alternative and the out-of-the-box solution to customize an answer for you to spend less and gain more in your high-vibrancy journey. Visit www.chriskaler.net. Real healing and real caring to your health needs. I would like to introduce to you tonight in his show, Mr. Chris Kaler. I am Chris Kaler. Bob, how are you tonight, my friend? I am doing just fine. How are you doing? The old saying, never better, just keeps on getting better <laughs> and better. Things are absolutely perfect in my world. There's absolutely nothing that I can complain about. Nobody would listen anyway. <laughs> you saw the little note I sent you. It's hotter than heck. Yeah. Well, you guys got some weather. Well, we got weather too. It, we're not that hot. Maybe, uh, I don't know, in Fahrenheit, maybe in the uh, upper 60s or something like that. So it's, nice. it's decent in Winnipeg. You can go out in your shorts and go out in shorts in wintertime anyway, so it doesn't matter. A <laughs> <Yeah, that. laughs> little bit of, of some updates about the whole realm of energy. I did get a few emails and they asked me if I noticed the magnetic field around the earth that collapsed for a couple hours a few days ago. I don't think I really noticed anything. But having said that, I have been getting a lot of channelings in the past that there's going to be a reboot of energy within the planet and it's going to consist of the magnetic grid, the magnetic shield being dropped for a little while. When I heard that from them, I thought, Maybe it finally happened. Maybe things are changing. So I don't know if anybody else out there felt any kind of changes in energy. Let me tell you, there has been some major shifting going on, some major developments, major knowledge coming forward. And that seems to be the process week after week after week uh, when I get into my office. And there's one specific person I work with, and she's a wonderful lady. She lives in Germany, Tokyo, and the UK. She's all over the place and whenever I work with her it seems to be a portal that brings in different information and energies last Tuesday was no exception everybody talks about the creation of the universe how the universe was created and so on the Big Bang we shouldn't be so concerned with the creation of the universe but I think more so with the creation of our galaxy so if you go into outer space and you look down and you see all these little spots of galaxies all over the place, I think that we need to concentrate on. The latest findings that I'm getting is that this galaxy, our Milky Way galaxy, our home of homes, 
was created by a dark consciousness. Of course, everybody would say, oh, no, it was created by God. It was created by love and light. That's not what I'm finding. The consciousness that created the Big Bang within our galaxy is a consciousness called the U, and that is spelled Y-I-W. And these are some pesky critters that I've been chasing around. They keep on coming up here and there, and they seem to like to practice witchcraft. The real kicker Fungus, different fungus have a consciousness. Fungus can be controlled, manipulated, and sent to do different things within people. And this type of fungus is called hyphomacet, and it is a microscopic form of fungus, which is the consciousness that this specific being is in control of. That is starting to bring up a lot of different issues, finding it a lot within the DNA and the RNA of humans. So if we cancel out this fungus, it tends to open the door and to create a better bedrock of healing, if you will. Kind of where I'm going now with the whole consciousness of the galaxy, consciousness of the universe, let's, let's just put the universe aside. That's something completely different. I think we need to focus on the galaxy, and that's what we're going to be doing. That has been fast and furious. Also, the big concept about the reptilians, those dastardly, drastic reptilians who have nothing better to do than make life rough for us. Dan McBull in the 30s, he's been on the show about three times. He talked about uh, Samiliac, and it is a form of licorice. It's a salty licorice. And there's one candy store in Sweden that sells candy with this type of supplement within it. And this is supposed to a good number to help get rid of these things. But what I have found that by taking the DNA and the RNA and reversing the polarity, that tends to help to shift out these critters. We've been working fast and furious on developing all the right scenarios. Of course, I get new information and it needs to be tweaked and we need to find out the proper way to use it. Otherwise, somebody could get poked in the eye and that's not a lot of fun. <laughs> so I'm finding a lot less dark energy that needs to be dealt with. Still some major culprits, Lucifer, Horus, Set, Thoth, they're still all in play and they're, they're still having their way with humanity and we've been kicking their, their scrawny butts all over the place too, all over the galaxy. So things, things are getting interesting. Things are, are getting a little more clearer as far as, as what's causing the major, major health problems. Working with somebody in, in the UK with ALS, we're slowly making some, some headway with that. We have Dr. Susan Smith-Jones as a guest. She's been on the show before a couple of times. So she gets frequent flyer miles now doesn't she bob absolutely <laughs> i you know i was just, i was just sitting here saying fly flying where's she going <laughs> She's a leading holistic health educator and author. Dr. Susan Smith-Jones reveals her favorite methods to supercharge metabolism, burn more calories, boost energy, and reshape the body. If you've ever been struggling with losing weight or gaining it back after having some success, this program is for you. For over 35 years, Dr. Susan has relied on herbs, spices, foods, and a variety of natural remedies to detoxify cleanse and rejuvenate her body and main, maintain vibrant health and youthful vitality and teaches this practical information in her books on her website. Susan has never used prescription medicine and hasn't had a cold or flu in almost 30 years. In her latest 2016 trio series of new books, The Curative Kitchen and Lifestyle, Living on the Lighter Side, Healthy and Happy and Radiant at Any Age, she shows you exactly how to fully lose weight and rejuvenate your body so you can look and feel your best. No matter your age, Susan's three new books incorporate her best of the best health enhancing secrets to reverse aging, achieving high level wellness and live with gusto. Please welcome back once again to the show, Dr. Susan Smith-Jones. Well, hello, Chris, and hello, Bob. It's great to be back with you both. Oh, yeah. Always a pleasure, Susan. Oh, so, yeah. um, it is springtime. And, of course, everybody is dusting off the winter garb and taking a look in the mirror and saying, yuck. 
<laughs> what oh, the goodness. what the heck am I looking at? I've got a very comfortable paunch that sits around my waistline. This is definitely something that needs to be addressed. Sitting nine hours a day in a chair doesn't help much at all and not having any time to exercise, but that's my cross to bear and that's what's going to happen. You know, one of the biggest questions I get within my work and, and everybody is concerned about this is metabolism and how to speed it up, how to get your body to metabolize food a little better. Yes, gosh, and I wish we had three hours, but so I'll talk a little bit quicker today. <laughs> um, lots of people think that if you just change your diet, it will affect your metabolism. But really, the control mechanism for obesity or being overweight, it's not diet, it's muscle metabolism. And for those people that don't remember, the basal metabolic rate is the rate in which your body utilizes energy. In other words, how efficiently your body burns calories. And the higher your metabolism, the more fat you burn and the easier time you have um, losing the weight and keeping it off. So exercise is the key to controlling metabolism. Now, you know, these we, we see these statistics all over. Two out of every three people who go on a diet will gain back all the weight in a year or less. 97% will gain it all back in five years. And even more than that, um, people will often gain back more than they, they lost. But the, the bottom line, and then I'll get into the nitty-gritty and all the details, is if you have some weight to lose, your goal is to retrain your body so that it burns up all the calories you eat, that you get storing none as fat. Now, maybe you need a little bit of a diet to help break back bad eating habits and we'll talk about the foods you want to emphasize and reduce or get rid of and to lose some fat but the long-term weight control requires a change in the body chemistry so you don't get fat all over again and exercise is the only way to change your metabolism so that your body converts fewer calories to fat and you need aerobic exercise, you know, like brisk walking and cycling, swimming, aerobic dance, to burn the fat out of your muscles. And then you need to add some type of strength training, weightlifting, whatever you call it, to build up your muscle, which in, then increases metabolism. The layman out there, we've all hear the word aerobic and anaerobic. Can you explain exactly what anaerobic and aerobic means? Yes. Well, aerobic means with oxygen. Anaerobic means without oxygen. So aerobic means that you'd be walking or jogging at a pace where you could still pretty much carry on a conversation. You might not be able to sing an opera, but if you're jogging along with your spouse, you both can carry on a conversation. But if you're, if you're sprinting so quickly that you are out of breath, you're no longer burning fat as your fuel source. You're actually um, burning sugar, and and you're no longer using the oxygen to help you burn the fat, and you're no longer doing an aerobic activity. But let let me say something because this what I'm about to say next is so important, and it will change everyone's lives in terms of exercise. Keep in mind that the more muscle you build, and ladies, you, do, you don't have to be a bodybuilder. You just want to be more toned because as we get older, our muscles atrophy. They, they shrink, and we don't want that. So muscle burns fat. It's that simple because muscle is more metabolically active than fat. And pound for pound, muscle burns five times more calories than most other body tissues. And here's my favorite secret of all. If you increase the muscle on your body, you'll increase the number of calories that your body burns every moment. And if you have 10 extra pounds of muscle to your body, and I'll tell you in a moment how you build up that muscle, 10 extra pounds of muscle will help you burn about 500 more calories a day, a day, wow. not a week. And you'd have to jog six miles a day, seven days a week to burn the same number of calories as adding on 10 extra pounds of that metabolically active 
muscle to your body. So how do you do it? You do it by two to three times a week, and it will take four to six months to build on 10 pounds of muscle. If you work out in a gym or to DVDs in your home with weight training and you do it three times a week, it will take about four months. If you do it two times a week, 30 to 40 minutes, it will take about six months. So you want to combine that that weight training with anaerobic exercise, I mean with, excuse me, with aerobic exercise. And what's, what's relevant here with that example I just gave you, let's say that you're, let's say you're jogging with your husband and he's breezing along and singing a song and you're so out of breath that you can barely put two syllables together. He's burning fat, but your fat burning mechanisms have shut down. So when you do aerobic exercise, you've got to do it so it fits in with where your fitness level is. Um, it, it, but it's okay every once in a while, Chris, to add in, I call them bursts of in, intensity bursts of exercise. Let's say you're jogging or you're hiking and you see a tree way ahead of you for 90 seconds. You want to go much faster than normal on a steeper hill. And then when you get to the top of the hill, you don't just stop. You keep walking. And why you want to do this is that when you force your body to do maybe four or five of these intensity bursts during a workout, it increases the fat-burning enzymes in your body. And they realize that not only do they need to grow in your body, to help you with your regular aerobic activity. But now they need to grow faster because you're doing these intensity bursts. And a few moments of exercising harder for just a little bit, 30 to 90 seconds, will help you burn much more fat than if you just do the regular walk the whole time. Different treadmills and stair climbers that have programs within them. And you you select your program, it's got these bursts already programmed in. So that's why they're there, is to shock your body a little bit, to take you out of aerobic, throw you into anaerobic a little bit, and get things moving, get things kick-started. Now, I come from the bodybuilding world. I spent a lot of years in the gym. I was a gym rat. I had two gym memberships, one across the street from where I worked and one across the street from where I lived. So in the morning and afternoon and night, I was in the gym. I was no uh, Hulk Hogan or nothing like that, but I was really into the science of it, is that if you are trying to build muscle, no matter how many repetitions you do, the last four or five have to be we call failure, whereas you cannot do anymore. Those are the ones that actually build the muscle. If you're doing a a set of 12 reps, the first eight repetitions are just basically building yourself up to fail. So you want to get to those ones where you can barely push anymore. And that's when you have a spotter who helps you just a little bit to get that last rep out of it. Those are the ones that are going to do you the most good. Those are the painful ones, ladies and gentlemen. And those are the ones you want. So if you're, if you're trying to build muscle, you're lifting weight and it's not getting there, you may need to rethink the whole science behind building muscle. And that is by doing those failure reps. Uh, the last four or five at failure, that is where the muscle tissue starts to tear, and that is when you start repairing muscle and creating more of it. That's how it gets bigger. So let I, I, I absolutely agree with you. In other words, if you go to the gym and you can do 30 reps, obviously the weight's way too light for you. Yes. And when you do, when you do the weightlifting, you don't want to every day work out the exact same muscles. They need to recuperate Because you just mentioned that the muscle fiber tears down, but then it builds up a little bit stronger and stronger and stronger all the time. And that is why one of the, and for that reason and what I'm about to tell you, you cannot skimp on getting good sleep at night. Um, It's got to be a non-negotiable lifestyle practice, especially if you want to lose weight. Because all the research shows that skimping on sleep interferes with your body's ability to process carbohydrates, and then that leads to the elevated blood sugar levels and an increased tendency to to store calories as fat. And this happens because when you're sleep-deprived, your body produces more of that stress hormone called cortisol, 
which seems to set this chain reaction into motion. And then combined with a good sleep, you want to make sure that you graze throughout the day. You don't have one or two massive meals. You graze. You have four to five smaller meals. In fact, Chris, have you ever wondered how, uh, I'm sure you think about this every night, Mm -hmm. how sumo wrestlers get so big? One big meal a day. Yeah, well, yeah, that's exactly it. They fast, and then they gorge themselves with lots of food. And as you can see, this approach is counterproductive to your goal if you want to lose weight. If you want to increase your metabolism, besides doing that exercise, it's best to eat several small, healthy meals a day because this grows, grazing approach to meals keeps your metabolism stoked. It's like putting little kindling on a fire. You know, this all goes back to the caveman days. To eat when they could. And when there was no food, into famine mode, whereas everything they eat would get stored. And then when there was plenty of food and they eat lots, then their body would start to burn. So same thing with your body. If you're going to cut carbs, make sure you don't cut carbs out of breakfast because that's food for your brain to, to go through the day. Your, your brain needs those, those carbohydrate sugars to, to function properly. Yes, and I would add, I mean, I'm going to say a few things about sugar, but first about don't get in the habit of eating all your food cooked. My approach to healthful eating is a diet of whole foods as close to the way Mother Nature, them, Mother Nature made them as possible because it's this kind of diet that restores harmony to the body, mind, and spirit. It replenishes our life force. And and you want to eat, emphasize some good raw food, some wonderful fresh vegetables. Always have a salad every day or or two. And and I, I like to grow sprouts in my kitchen, uh, but fresh fruits are great. Uh, lots of people say I don't want fruit because it's carb, but there's a difference between good carbs and bad carbs. And I always, you know, I know you'll agree with me. You want to um, change your color palette. You really want to ditch the white stuff because white foods like white bread, white flour, pasta, sugars, cakes, pies, muffins, donuts, they will add pounds to your waistline and little or nothing to your nutrition. And that's because these white foods have this high glycemic index that raises your blood sugar rapidly only to have it crash and burn, causing you to crave more of the sweets and the fattening white stuff. And most of us know that we should stay away from sugar. Um, but I just read last week that the average American still consumes, and so I don't know if this is both Canada and U.S., but it said uh, U.S., consumes two to three pounds of sugar a week. And, you know, even if you're not adding table sugar in your morning coffee, maybe they're hidden sources like bread, mayonnaise, ketchup, spaghetti sauce, almost all frozen meals. So you want to, you, sugar wreaks havoc on your blood sugar, and you want to avoid it at all costs. Um, and then you also look at the, the other white foods, you know, like white sugar, white flour foods, because they've had the good fiber and the wheat germ and most of the nutrients taken out of them, and it might leave you with a light, fluffy biscuit that's um, tasty, maybe to you, and almost no nutritional value, but it leaves your native intelligence hungry for real food, but controlling the mind translates that desire for good food into a wish for more biscuits, sweet rolls, spaghetti, and sugary cereal. And, you know, I always say if you want to keep your blood sugar level level stable and your waist smaller, aim to eat a rainbow of fresh produce every day. Um, produce is the most nutritional food that you can eat. Things like tomatoes, oranges, blueberries, spinach, beans, squash, apples, berries, grapes. You know, avocado is a wonderful fruit to eat. But there is an exception to the avoid white foods rule. So name me a white food, Chris, that's good for you. Parsnip. Well, very good. (laughs) Yes, all right. Name me. That was too easy. Name me two more. (laughs) Uh, Another white food. Another white food. Hmm. You know what? You got me. You might not want to stand around me too close. If I, if I, 
if I eat too many of these? Be- white beans. Well, no, oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, wax, yeah, that's wax, great. wax beans. Yeah. I was thinking onions. Onions and garlic and and cauliflower and white beans. You're right. You you have quality time in solitude when you eat too many of those. (laughs) And by the way, speaking of beans and the fiber, you know, I know you probably don't have other guests that talk about this, but I will. It is so important to have at least one good bowel movement a day because constipation really makes your body very toxic and acidic and i always say have one good bowel movement a day and if you're lucky maybe you'll have one or two more bonus rounds but you (laughs) want to avoid being constipated and 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 grazing throughout the day and exercising getting sleep drinking enough water and and speaking of water i just posted a blog today so if you go to susansmithjones.com by the way by by the way i'm giving away today a free book it's a free full color beautiful recipe book with affirmations on each page and photos of the recipes it's right there on my home page but i posted a blog today all about water and how drinking the right amounts of water and when throughout the day and the best water how that can really help your metabolism and i'll just i'll bottom line it about how important water is so anyway that's in my blog on at susansmithjones.com but water is so important chris to maintaining a healthy metabolic rate because you want to have about eight glasses a day but you want them between meals so they don't dilute your digestive mm-hmm. enzymes. And if you're more physically active, if you take infrared saunas like I do or work out a lot and so you sweat a lot, you might need a little bit more water than that. But the liver's main functions, as most people know, are detoxification and regulation of metabolism. And the kidneys can get rid of a lot of toxins and spare the liver if they have sufficient water. So this allows the liver to metabolize more fat. Um, So adequate water also decreases bloating and edema and flushes out any accumulation you might have of sodium, acidic wastes, and toxins. So actually, the more water you drink, the, 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 the more efficient your metabolic rate will be. And even, and, and by the way, if you, if you become thirsty, then you're very dehydrated. Don't even get to that point. Drink, keep water with you throughout the day. And even a little bit of dehydration will substantially lower your metabolic rate. Often people come to me and say, Susan, I do everything you say. I work out. I sleep. I'm eating the right foods. You know, but I'm just struggling with the weight. And then I get to the question, how much water you dr- do you drink a day, a day? And they often will say this. I don't need to drink much water because I have coffee and I have a cup of soda uh-huh, and I have uh-huh. caffeinated tea and alcohol. And all of those that I just mentioned actually dehydrate your body. And Correct. if you have any of those during the day, you need to drink more water. Mm. One cup of coffee will dehydrate you three glasses of water. That is right. I love working with you because you know your stuff. <laughs> Doctor, I have a question coming in, and this is something that I see, I have seen a lot of times. Her name is Leona. She says, I'm a housewife with two kids. What can I do at home to increase my meta- metabolism? Metabolic rate. Leona, that is a great question, Leona, because the one thing Leona and everyone who wants to boost their metabolic rate doesn't want to do is sit all the time. You've heard the saying, I'm sure, that sitting is like the new smoking. And five hours of sitting, Leona is like smoking a pack of cigarettes for what it does to your body physiologically. So you just want to keep moving. And I know this might sound crazy, and maybe this will let everyone know why I'm still single. But when I'm in the bathroom brushing my teeth, I'm doing squats. When I'm in the kitchen doing the dishes, I have this little, it's called a therm, theraband. It's like a gray soft thing you know that you can stand on with one foot and you try not to wiggle you know because it's got a little bit of air in it but you try to to not fall off it and every and if you're watching tv 
make a rule that whenever the commercials come on, you get up and you walk in place. Or maybe you don't watch TV unless you're sitting on your stationary bike. There uh, Maybe in the parking lot at the market, you park at the far end so you get a little bit of a walk. Maybe at the shopping center, you take the stairs and not the escalator or elevator. There's so many ways that you can stay active. And not only that, and Chris, I know you will agree with me. Yes, you've got to do aerobic activity, and yes, you've got to do some strength training. So so the things that fall down south on your body as you get older <laughs> can be lifted back up north. But you also need to keep your body flexible. Because my, my grandmother told me this when I was a teenager, and it didn't make sense then, but it sure does now, that you're only as young as you are flexible. So you've got to, whatever you can do, whether you do yoga or stretching or Pilates, and I believe that we don't stop moving because we age. I think that we age because we stop moving. So, mm -hmm. Leona, any way you can keep yourself more physically active, do it. And with kids, my goodness, you're chasing them around all the time. Let me add to that. My wife, she's a stay-at-home mom. So she started just kind of watching what she eats. She knocked a whole lot of sugar out of her diet and consciously. So like what kind of sugar? A lot of processed sugars now is a lot of things yes. with fructose. Fructose is the yes. biggest culprit out there. She knocked any kind of diet drink out of her diet. So anything yes. with aspartame, anything with artificial sweeteners. Oh. Now her blood sugars are starting to stabilize a little bit. But all of a sudden she got on the scale and she lost 16 pounds. Just whoa. by just blinking an eye. She, she, whoa. Was like, whoa. And what an incentive. Because yeah, as absolutely. she gets it down, your premiums will go down, right? <laughs> Well, that's what I'm hoping. Now, uh, now, yeah, of course, no, they uh, will. here's Leona saying, oh, yeah, I've got two kids. I, I, I haven't got time to work out. I haven't got time to do this and that. The more active your kids are, the more active you are. Right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. In fact, let me mention to you, because nobody listening, not even you, Chris, would know this, but, but on Friday, I send out my new May newsletter. And every month, if you've signed up for it, in, in the sidebar on the right side of SusanSmithJones.com, it says exclusive for subscribers only. And you give me your email address. And once a month, I, I, don't, I don't inundate you with emails. You get a wonderful newsletter for me that the general public never sees. And it has several different stories in it and beautiful photos and my best health tips and always gifts to everybody but uh, what's relevant here is the, the one and i just wrote part of this this morning i wrote a whole article on raising healthy children and how to get them to exercise and eat better foods and be as healthy as possible and so, and this is free by the way so all of this is in my newsletter and you, you just sign up for it right there in the sidebar on the right side at susansmithjones.com. It takes 10 seconds. It says sign up now. Yeah, we're in, we're in already. And a boy, Bob. Yeah, well, the office already did it while she was talking. <laughs> yeah, there's something yeah. I want to touch on, and that's all of these different supplements that come out. And, and, you know, Dr. Oz is awesome showing us all of these supplements. Oh, Raspberry ketones, green coffee, you know, all of this stuff. You done your whole salary <laughs> on the supplements he recommends. Ultimately, if there's any supplement that anybody, anybody at all can take that is going to give you an edge, that is going to help shed some weight, what would you say that supplement is? Well, there's one that I've taken for 31 years, and you know, no cold or flu in all this time. And by the way, companies don't pay me to say anything, but if there's something I like and I take, I tell people about it. And I write all about it on my website under articles and in this newsletter coming out on Friday. But it's spirulina. And mm -hmm. there's one that comes from the Kona coast of Hawaii. It's got 94 nutrients in it. And one serving, which is a teaspoon of the powder or just three tablets, depending on what you like to take, has the equivalent to five servings of fruits and vegetables. So especially for kids that don't 
like to eat vegetables, um, this is a great way to get the vegetables in because you can hide it in recipes. You can hide it in guacamole, and I, I make kale chips with it, and I put it on popcorn, and, of course, it's simple to put in smoothies. And there have been over 500 studies on it. And I did a, I did a clinical study 18 months ago with um, just over 50 people. And, and everyone was interested in losing weight. And I had them all take three, three grams or 3,000 milligrams a day. I didn't care if it was powder or tablet. And they didn't have to change anything else in their lifestyle. And they did this for three months, so it was one season. And after one season, everybody in the study lost one to three pounds weekly just by adding Hawaiian spirulina to their diet. Now, but just know, it's not a weight loss product. It's a superfood. It's literally a superfood, and hundreds of scientific studies show it to be the most nutrient-rich food on planet Earth. So what I think what it, well, I don't think, I know what it does is it fills all those nutritional gaps in your body. If you're not living the perfect healthy lifestyle or eating the perfect diet, at least you have this edge of getting in the nutrients that your body needs. So I take that every day, and then I make sure I have chia seeds every day. Oh, oh. Gosh, Bob and Chris. So here's one other thing. In the newsletter that's coming out Friday, I, by the way, you know I'm a culinary instructor and I create recipes. Mm -hmm. I created a basic recipe for chia pudding. Chia pudding. Chia In pudding. fact, I can, I can, yeah, I can give it to you right now, but kids love this. Adults love it. It takes about 90 seconds to make. And, and I'll tell you right now, now, because I give, I give you variations on how to use it in the newsletter going out Friday, but this is what you do. You take four tablespoons of chia seeds, and you take one and a half cups of milk of your choice, like almond, coconut, cashew rice. I, I make homemade almond milk, but you can buy almond milk. Two tablespoons of a liquid sweetener. Now, honey, there's agave. I like maple syrup and one quarter teaspoon of vanilla ex extract. So it takes about 60 seconds to put all that into a glass jar. I use a glass Pyrex measuring cup. I usually double the recipe. You stir it all together, and you put it in the refrigerator for about four hours, but overnight is best, so make it before you go to bed. And the next morning, you have... Del Do you remember tapioca pudding? Oh, I hated it. Okay, well, all right. So th this, this has, like, the consistency of tapioca pudding, but it's a little different color. And so I'll take, uh, like, a cup of this pudding, and I'll put, like, berries on the top or nuts or granola. And I've never found anybody that doesn't love this pudding. And, and so why chia seeds? They're rich in healthy fats. They're rich in omega-3 fatty acids. One serving has 11 grams of fiber, 180 milligrams of calcium. It's got protein. Um, and there's so many ways you can use chia seeds. I'll often put them in my smoothies in the morning, too. If you go to articles on my website and you scroll down, it says spirulina and astaxanthin, and you'll see all these articles. And I show you aerial views. It's an award-winning, the most prestigious microalgae farm in the world on the Kona coast of Hawaii. And, uh, and it's amazing how, I mean, they've done studies to show how pure and fresh and actually the best smelling, the best tasting spirulina this is. And, uh, and, and, you know, and, and in my private practice, I recommend it if you want more energy, if you want um, to boost your immune system. You know, it's a gr excellent source of iron, and there's a component in it. I don't know if you've heard this word before, but it's got some, a component in it called phycocyanin. Cyan means that blue color. That mm -hmm. gives you that bluish color of the algae. And there have been a few hundred studies done just on phycocyanin, 
And this spirulina is the richest source of phycocyanin. It has uh, over 500 milligrams, and it helps to detoxify the liver and the kidneys and cleanse your body. It helps to prevent cancer. And if you go down under articles and you scroll down, it says phycocyanin, nature's magic medicine. You can read the studies there on phycocyanin. But that's all in this Hawaiian spirulina. Now, I'll tell you a little secret since it's just three of us on the phone here. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. They give me, yeah, they give me a code. And, and I, buy, I buy a year's supply at once because I don't want to run out, and I often give it as gifts. And whenever I travel, I usually take the tablets because they're easier to take. Um, but the code they gave me to use to get 25% off is Revitalize. So, um, so I'm just saying that, okay? If if you call or you go online to order, it's nutrex hawaii dot com n u t r e x dash hawaii dot com. If you order, then use the code revitalize. You'll get twenty five percent off. I'm writing that down right now. Revitalize. And I, I would say try try it for three months, and you will be amazed at at how you feel. Now, not only that, but every, I shouldn't tell you all my secrets here, but every 10 days, <laughs> and I've got these recipes on my website. I make a facial mask, and I wash my face and neck, and I, and I, and I mash up a ripe banana with a little bit of avocado and some of this spirulina powder from Hawaii, and I put it on the face, the neck, the decollete, and the back of my hands. And, and then after about 15, 20 minutes, I rinse it off. And by the way, that's a great mask to use on Halloween if you're going trick-or-treating because <laughs> it's perfect. By the time you're done trick-or-treating with that green mask on your face, your skin will be really useful. Um, but it, it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, you don't know this, but I'm debuting on your show today my brand-new weight loss book called Living on the Lighter Side. And I, I talk about all my best secrets for metabolism and reshaping your body and rejuvenating. And I have, um, I have a three day to a three week detox program that incorporates the spirulina in this book, Living on the Lighter Side. So you, you can, you can read some sample pages of it on my website. And what, what is that website again, Susan? It is my name, Susan Smith Jones dot com. And right there below where you sign up for the newsletter, um, it's showing my three new books, uh, Healthy, Happy and Radiant at Any Age, The Curative Kitchen and Lifestyle, and Living on the Lighter Side. You can get them all individually. Um, and they're, they're ebooks, but they're not like any ebook you've ever seen. It's like the Curative Kitchen is just it's about 110 pages, full color, beautiful design, great information. And when you buy all three together as a trio set, you get a huge discount. It's almost not worth it to get them individually because for a couple dollars more, you can buy all three of them. And they're selling all over the world, and they just came out this week. That is awesome. I want to ask one last thing, get into this before the end of the show. Are there any concerns <laughs> that anybody needs to know about soy products? Well, I think it's very difficult in this day and age in which we live to get really pure soy products that haven't don't have, that aren't GMO and aren't perfectly organic. On occasion I do eat soy, but I always make sure it's it's uh, organic, and I think fermented soy is the best. I'm really into probiotics, and I have an article on my website on fermented vegetables that you can make at home, you know, like sauerkraut and kimchi. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I am, I'm not an advocate of consuming lots of soy. Soy can be estrogenic, so it can raise the estrogen it within is. the body. Follow that comes cancer. So I'm not going to say that soy products right. cause cancer, but those are studies that have been done that the estrogen levels, high estrogen, is a contributor to, to certain cancers. 
Candida. What is candida? Candida is yeast. Candida is fungus. What feeds that yeast and fungus? It is sugar. People get a lot of issues where all of a sudden they bloat out. They get out really bloated. This is a fermentation process taking place in your body that all of a sudden you give it the right component and boom, our body's temperature is perfect for fermentation. 98.6. You can brew beer in your gut. No problem. Just add some yeast, sugar, <laughs> and some hops. Then you can yeah. you your own brew. Well, that's uh, why sometimes people say, I don't eat ice cream, but they eat a lot of dairy ice cream. And, and, and it's almost, it's like alcohol in your body. You burp, you kind of smell alcohol. It kind of puts you, puts you in a comatose state. And, and you said the magic bullet. Remember that spirulina is 60% protein and pure nutrients, low in calories. It's it's the best edge I've ever found, and and it doesn't give you a high, then followed by a low. It just gives you more energy. But every morning I do this, and I recommend it, because even though lemons are acid to the taste, they're alkaline in your body, and I always create a lemon shot. They sell them all over Brentwood, Santa Monica, where I live, and they charge between four and six dollars, and you can make it for about twenty five <laughs> cents at home. And you just take a big, uh, an organic lemon. I love the Myers now. And you cut it in half and you squeeze all the juice into a glass. And then you want to add in two things. And I, I get them as a liquid extract because it's just easier. Because I don't have time to juice ginger. And so I get liquid extract of pure ginger and one of pure cayenne. And I put a dropper full in the lemon. I do not dilute this in any way with water. And I drink it down. Well, have your have your sweetheart next to you because your lips will pucker and then you'll <laughs> want to kiss. But yes. always rinse your mouth out with water because the the acid in the lemon will start to erode your enamel. So you just I always rinse my mouth out, rinse my throat out, and I start every morning with that, and that will really help in your in your um, goal to lose weight to to do a lemon shot every morning. Lemons are great for your body. The lemon, cayenne pepper, and maple syrup in water is called the master cleanse. If, yeah, if Stanley Burroughs, who created that, was yeah. a friend of mine um, for de for decades before he passed away, and and that's very healthy for the body. And cayenne, by the way, stimulates fat and carb metabolism, especially after meals. When and also in the in a study in the Journal of Nutritional Science, it reported that. Taking one capsule, and I, I have them here, of cayenne, a capsule of it, an hour before an aerobic workout increased fat burning. It boosts your metabolism by about 25%. It also cuts your appetite, by the way, and helps you absorb the nutrients from our foods and, and helps you not to crave refined carbs. Great for your circulation. It takes away all the inflammation out of your veins and arteries, and, and you're going to yes, blood pressure is yes. going to go down. One important thing: remember, Absolutely. if you are getting hungry, take a couple big glasses of water. That'll that'll curb any hunger, so you yes, don't run, run yes. into the Yes, and if, and do this. By the way, do this. Have the prepare the water an hour before you're going to drink it. Put the good good water in the glass, and remember, check out my first blog there on water, and then put in a tablespoon of chia seeds and in an hour they'll swell up in the water and you drink that and you'll own um 20 minutes to 30 minutes before a meal and you will eat half as much as you're used to eating and will be completely satisfied this is all you know what i consider really good advice and to a lot of people it sounds like a lot but if you just start by reading some labels and cutting the sugars and the processed sugars and doing a yes. bit of education, you know, rethinking the, the convenience foods and rethinking, you know, making stuff for yourself and starting from scratch on a few things, it really isn't that big of a deal. My wife is really finding out that, you know what, it can be a little bit of fun. The kids pitch in a little bit, bring out the food processor, chop up some avocado, a little, throw it in there and make something healthy. It, it can actually be a pleasant experience. It doesn't have to be a big to-do. You can make massive progress just by inching forward, taking baby steps every day. And then all of a sudden, a month from now, you'll feel like you're walking on air. 
That's exactly it. That is all the time we have for tonight on A Quantum View. Our guest has been Dr. Susan Smith-Jones with some wonderful information. What is your website again, please, Susan? It is susansmithjones.com. Make sure before Friday, sign up for my newsletter over in the sidebar. You'll get a free copy of the cookbook and check out my top blog. Wonderful. I certainly hope people take advantage of that. It's some really good information. We're going to be back in two more weeks. This is Chris Kaler out. Mm -hmm.